Thank you so much for having me today. I'm really excited to be here. So our organization, Environmental Health Trust, has been working on the issue of environmental causes of cancer and other health effects for over a decade now. Uh, and um, there's a lot to say on this. I would say, I would start out by saying, please go and watch the last few years of presentations as well, because I'm trying to add some new things. Um, also, we just, um, Dr. Deborah Davis's book, Disconnect, uh, has just been updated and re-released. I wrote uh, a chapter in here. It's a 50 page chapter, and it's all about a lot of what I'm gonna talk about today, which is how you can protect yourself from uh, cell phones, wireless, 5G cell towers, what you can do in order to uh, be healthier and also to make a difference. Because just like with food and water and all of these environmental health issues that we are facing that challenge our healthy living, we can make personal changes, but in the end, what's actually needed is change at the uh, federal level. Um, sometimes states can take actions, but in the case of wireless and cell phones and 5G, we really need to have all hands on deck. And if everyone did something, we could really fix this situation that we're in. So let me share my screen right now and share a few slides with you. So, I'm gonna be talking about wireless radiation. For those of you who are new to this, all wireless devices emit microwave radiation. I did not know this. I thought my phone was magic. I mean, I just thought it just worked. I didn't realize that it was actually emitting frequencies invisible into the air. You can't smell it, you can't taste it, but it's very much there. And it's microwave frequencies, just like what comes out of your microwave oven, except it's a little bit different. First of all, microwaves heat food and cell phones are not supposed to be so high. They're much lower level of power, so they don't overheat. Um, however, also wireless technology uses these frequencies to transmit data. So it's non-heating, but it's pulsed, modulated, it's an erratic signal, and there's actually uh, a complex waveform, which several scientists have published on how it is more biologically active because of the modulation, because of the pulses. So in fact, it's different than a microwave oven, lower power, but a different kind of signal, which has been implicated in a lot of uh, bio effects. When we hold devices, near our body, like in this picture, typical these days, shocking to me, but you have a device which is radiating right into the abdomen, right into the chest, and even pets are affected, right? Our animals, and I'm gonna talk about wildlife a little bit later. We put cell phones in our pocket, unaware that that phone is always transmitting. Every wireless device, even if you're not using it, so long as it's powered on, and connected uh, to a Wi-Fi network, or even if you are not using the Wi-Fi or the uh, cellular, if the antennas are active, it's always transmitting, radiating out radio frequency radiation, also known as RF, which is um, absorbed into the body. And it goes out into the air, of course. Um, but a percentage is absorbed into your hand, into your chest, into your body. And also there are other devices like these speakers that we all have. And in fact, they are always emitting also. Now, before I go any further, because sometimes when I talk about this, people get this sinking feeling in their stomach. Um, some people challenge it, and, and I'm, I'm glad to have those conversations because um, that's, that's what I did. That's how I got involved in this, is I thought, this can't be, it can't be possible. Uh, 10 years ago, when I, more than 10 years ago, became involved, there were not these Alexas, these, you know, they just didn't exist. It was just the phone and just the towers, really, or at least that's what I thought at the time. But there is safer ways to make technology. We can fix this. I'm not against technology. 
I and the scientists and the experts I work with, we use technology all the time, but we use it with a wire rather than wireless. And this Alexa speaker is a perfect example because it, you see that cord there? That's the electrical cord. There's no reason why there couldn't be a cord that's transmitting the data instead of having it be emitting wireless and actually receiving wireless signals. Because that Alexa is both receiving and emitting signals. And in the air, when that's happening, it's being absorbed into our bodies. And as far as I know, and I'm pretty sure, there have not been studies by the federal government looking at what are those exposures into the body um, from that particular particular situation and I where you have a child so close. And I say that because actually that device has a fine print warning saying it should be eight inches away from you to be compliant with our government limits for human exposure, which are completely outdated, uh, irrelevant to health, and uh, don't consider children our long-term exposure. And I'll be talking about that as well. Then we have the situation of cell towers and cell antennas. They're going up on our schools, near our homes. Here's a high school with antennas on the uh, old chimney, not in use anymore. There are many, many examples of this. And many communities and school boards that are saying no to cell towers near schools or on school property for many reasons, not just the radiation, although that's a big one, but also fire risk, uh, the, the hazardous materials that are stored and the fact that schools should be for education, not uh, for radiation or commercial entities. So when you start thinking about this, we are now surrounded by wireless devices. And the first thing I tell people who ask, what can I do about my overexposure to wireless? The first thing is to think about what in your home emits wireless. Because one by one, you can go through those devices and start to swap out for safer technology. You also can, uh, you know, get rid of them if you don't need them, or something that some people do to reduce but not eliminate their exposure is to just have it on an on and off switch. Why have it on all the time? So we have uh, smart TVs. We have these wireless headphones, the cell phone, wireless speakers, cell towers that are outside that create exposures inside, in yards, in playgrounds, in parks, uh, and they go through the window. You have a cordless phone and it's base station, uh, the smart light bulbs, laptops, mouse, wireless router, tablets. The um, MP3 players aren't really around so much anymore, but many people have them. Then you have all your wearables like uh, smartwatches and virtual reality and wireless keyboards, anything with a Bluetooth, your wireless printer. And don't forget, I talked about this, but it really important is that cordless home phone that especially many of us uh, over 40 have. Uh, and I know I was in shock when I got a meter. There's actually meters that you can get to measure your radiation, the exposure in the air. And I had gotten rid of my, like the wireless, most of the wireless devices in my home. But I didn't realize that that home cordless phone sitting right in front of me at my desk was actually emitting all the time. The base is emitting all the time. And then, of course, there are these, uh, these AirPods and these earbuds that people put in their ears that also are transmitting all the time, even when you're not using them. So some kids are walking around you know, for hours a day, and that's right near your brain. The level might be lower, but that does not mean safe. And in fact, um, there are some studies that have shown effects at window times where there's a lower level rather than a higher level. And that's a whole bucket of information. You can go to Environmental Health Trust to learn more about that and to, to super dive into the science if you're interested. And of course, everything Bluetooth now and Wi-Fi. So 
you're going to hear that wireless radiation are often called RF for radio frequency. You might also hear the term, I should say, EMF or for electromagnetic fields. Um, it's non-ionizing. It is not the same as, uh, you know, your X-rays, the atomic bomb, radioactive radiation. However, uh, and that's because it doesn't carry enough energy to immediately uh, liberate electrons from atoms or molecules. That's called ionization. Um, although non-ionizing uh, radiation and, and low frequency fields, which are from electrical systems, uh, do not directly ionize, uh, they can lead to DNA damage. And that, have been, that has been shown in several studies where DNA damage, genetic damage has been found. Uh, and just to give you, so actually I should show you the, talk about the spectrum here. It's often divided, as I said, into non-ionizing and ionizing. And visible light is the dividing line, is about the dividing line around UV actually. Uh, some UV frequencies are non-ionizing and some are ionizing. And in fact, when you think about tanning beds or the studies that have been done now on these gel manicures, um, non-ionizing uh, radiation is associated with cancer and with genetic damage. There is a growing and ever-growing scientific base of uh, published studies, experimental in people, in animals, uh, cell cultures that link wireless frequencies, wireless exposure, exposure to cell phones to a broad range of impacts. Remember, our whole bodies are being exposed, so there's not just going to be one part of your body. Uh, there's studies linking, associating people who use the cell phones for years to their head with increased uh, with heavy use, which is defined as over 30 minutes a day, to increased brain cancer. Studies showing that women who carry the phone in their bra have developed cancers directly underneath where they hold the phone to their body. Uh, thyroid cancer, a Yale study funded by the American Cancer Society actually found increased thyroid cancer in people who used phones uh, more heavily than others, and in people who specifically had genetic dispositions, a certain a genetic makeup. And there are studies showing tumor promotion effects where, uh, for example, uh, studies where they took animals and they exposed them both to cell phone radiation frequencies, as well as known carcinogens, and found a tumor promotion effect where those that got both had uh, more cancers than those who only got one or the other. Then there are impacts to the brain. And that is what got me on this issue. It's what made me delve into the enormous amount of published studies. When I read that there was impacts to memory, behavior, um, neurotransmitters, brain development, increases in headaches, uh, I was like, wait a minute, you know, we don't want to be messing with the brain. But when you think about it, when you hold the phone to your head, you are absorbing radiation right into your brain from that phone near your head. And even when you, when you hold it out, that the brain is getting a level of absorption. And actually there was just a study that came out looking at holding the phone to your head versus just being in a cell tower radiation exposure. And they measured the dose and found that in fact, over time, you're getting more exposure from the cell tower, that full body, be it lower level because it's just day and night, which is what's happening now with 5G and the proliferation of towers that are going up everywhere. So there's also impacts to the reproductive system damaged sperm, decreased sperm, um, impacts to the ovaries in experimental studies, impacts to pregnancy outcomes, a lower birth weight. And you think about people putting that cell phone right in their pocket or uh, sitting on the cell phone as my, my uh, stepbrother did. And at which I was shocked when that happened, but that's where we are with devices these days. It might as well be another appendage to the body. Um, 
endocrine system, there are endocrine impacts. Uh, and some scientists are stating, Dr. Linda Birnbaum talks about this shaping up to be a classic um, endocrine disruptor in terms of what we're seeing, impacts to the thyroid and to testosterone and other hormones. Those have been documented in numerous published studies. Um, and for all of this, you're gonna read when you dive into the science, well, more research needs to be done. More research always needs to be done. But when you look at the whole body of science, there is so many studies that cannot be ignored. And there is no question that there are biological impacts. And yet we are increasing this with all of our use of wireless devices day and night. Um, synergistic effects, I talked a little bit about that where tumor promotion, but there's also studies looking at lead, um, higher levels of lead in the body paired with higher cell phone radiation exposure leading to, for example, in pregnant women, children who have more ADHD symptomology. Also studies on black carbon, which is an air pollutant and finding impacts uh, to at the cellular level. And then there are impacts to wildlife, flora and fauna. Uh, and I'm gonna be talking about that more, birds, bees and trees, which is a whole other level that has been ignored for decades by federal governments. And just as an example, uh, and, and yet another study, just yesterday, or two days ago, I'm sorry, this study came out looking to the microbiota, right, in, in mice from exposure to 3.5 gigahertz. And that's being used now in 5G. So 5G uses low bands that we've long used 